Howdy everyone, David here at Tabletopping.net and this is a continuation of my Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition Player's Handbook Classes Review and this video that you're watching today deals with the Sorcerer. Now if you've downloaded the Dungeons and Dragons basic rules from the website you're going to notice that the Sorcerer is not in that playtest, well the, the basic rules packet. So you're going to need to actually purchase the player's handbook from your local store or an online vendor to be able to play the Sorcerer. Now, the Sorcerer is also a pretty complex class. It's a lot more complex than playing you know, your basic mage. There are several other mechanics that are involved with the Sorcerer, and therefore I consider it a more advanced uh, type of class. So if it's your first time playing Dungeons and & Dragons and, and you want to blast stuff up with spells, uh, I, I wouldn't really rec recommend the Sorcerer as being your first class ever played. But, you know, some people can do it. Some people would, you know, like to gradually ease into a class. So the Sorcerer here has six pages of information in the player's handbook and you can see there's beautiful art and lots of information pertaining to the class and there's actually a really nice uh, chart a 1d100 percentile chart at the very end and we'll talk about that here in a little bit so whenever you decide you want to play a sorcerer there's information that tells you how they originated uh, also information on you know how to play one you know their tendencies and whatnot now Every class gets features and they get a lot of talents and skills and as they progress in level your character is definitely going to get you know more powerful. And the Sorcerer is no different than any other class in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. So as you can see on the matrix here, uh, the does go from levels 1 to 20 and it tells you everything from your proficiency bonus to your sorcery points which is pretty much your, the main mechanic of the sorcery class. Uh, all of the features as you level you get more and more goodies as well and then it also tells you how many cantrips you know how many spells per day per level as well so it's actually really informative now for the class features of the sorcerer you get a 1d6 hit point per level you also get armor weapon saving throw proficiencies which are going to be constitution and charisma for the sorcerer and there's also a small list of skills that you get to choose from now spellcasting uh, has a lot of information here the spellcasting talks about your cantrips your spell slots your spells known of first level and higher and the spellcasting ability which for the sorcerer is based off your charisma modifier well your charisma stat so there's your spell, spell save DC formula and also the spell attack modifier formula to help you out. Now, whenever you play a sorcerer, there are archetypes involved. And every class in D&D 5 gets archetypes. And the sorcerer is no different. So starting at level 1, they get to choose an archetype. And there's two archetypes for the sorcerer in D&D 5. The first one is Draconic Bloodline and the second is wild magic so what those do is it, it, it adds on to everything what you're going to be as a, as a sorcerer so you have your choice so it's basically just more flavor and more gidgets and gasmos and, and more fun stuff for your class that you're playing alright so the first thing we're going to talk about the fonts of magic this is baseline sorcerer stuff now at second level uh, basically you get you get sorcery points. Now your sorcery points are, are basically the, the main mechanic of the sorcerer class itself. And what you can do with your sorcery points is called flexible casting. Now flexible casting allows you to expend spell slots to, to actually purchase spell points. So if you, I'm sorry, if you run out of sorcery points you'll be able to expend a, a spell slot and have more sorcery points to twist your magic together. And here is the list here on the ratio that you can you know spend a spell slot and get this amount of points back and you can also vice versa that so if you have uh, too many sorcery points you can actually buy more spell slots by the level which is really nice now meta magic is a pretty cool feature with the sorcerer as well that's how you actually spell that's how you actually spend your sorcery points. Now, when you get to third level, you're going to be able to choose a couple from the following list. But as you get higher level, you'll be able to choose more. Now, there's Careful Spell, Distant Spell, Empowered Spell, 
Extended Spell, Heightened Spell, Quicken Spell, Subtle Spell, Twin Spell. Now what those do is it basically twists more goodies into the spell that you're casting and those take your sorcery points. So that's pretty much the main gimmick and the main mechanic of the sorcerer class which is great. Now at level 4, level 8, 12, 16, and 19 you're going to get ability score improvements. And what these do, uh, it's basically universal for every class in D&D 5e. And on those levels you get two points to spend on your ability scores whether it be Charisma or Intelligence or Constitution. And you can put two into one of those ability scores, or you can take your two points, split it up, and put one and one into two separate scores. However, there's a stipulation there where you cannot go over 20. So you cannot naturally raise a stat over 20. So there's also some optional rules in the Player's Handbook as well. And it's up to your dungeon master uh, if he or she wants to implement these optional rules, but they're called feats. So if your dungeon master does allow you to do this, you can forego taking your ability score improvement, and you can purchase a feat. So there's about six to eight pages of uh, feats in the back of the player's handbook. So it gives you another option as well. Now also, at level 20, you're going to get Sorceress Restoration, which gives you, on a short rest, gives you a certain amount of sorcery points, uh, replenishment. Now, as we talked about at level 1, you're going to get to choose a Sorceress Origin, which you, there's two. I mentioned the Draconic Bloodline and the Wild Magic. That adds more flavor on top of your Sorcerer. So the first one we'll discuss is the Draconic Bloodline. Now the Draconic Bloodline, basically you can see here there's a chart, and it lists a bunch of chromatic dragons, which are basically your cover colors like white, red, green, and then there's a metallic type of list of dragons, bronze, copper, gold, etc. Now you can choose this, it tells you the damage type, and then you're going to gain inherent abilities as you level you're going to gain more, you know, basically more flavor with your sorcerer. So, at whenever you choose level one, you're going to, if you do decide to go with the draconic bloodline, uh, you're going to get draconic resilience. At sixth level, you're going to get elemental affinity. At fourteenth level, you're going to get dragon wings. And finally, at eighteenth level, you're going to get draconic presence. And like I said, all of these are influenced by what type of draconic ancestry that you choose, which is actually really nice. Now the other sorcerer's origin is the wild magic. And at first level you get what wild magic. And this is what this chart is about right here. There's a massive amount of it and actually there's a lot of fun things on here where you can turn turn well you make a pony or, or a unicorn or you can make yourself smaller, make yourself bi bigger, and basically what the, the Wild Surge does is every time you cast a spell, your dungeon master can make you roll an additional d20. And if it rolls a 1, then that's when you have a Wild Magic Surge, and then that's when you would go to the chart, roll a d100, and see what the outcome is. So, for instance, 39 to 40, if you roll that on a percentile, you would regain 2d10 hit points. Actually pretty cool. That And that would go along with the spell that you ask, actually cast as well. So Wild Magic could actually add a lot of flavor and a lot of drama to your game. So in my games, I'm definitely making it mandatory. If somebody plays a sorcerer, they are going to roll a d20 on every single spell that they cast. Now, also, whenever you have Wild Magic, there's going to be uh, Tides of Chaos, which you also get at first. At 6th level, you're going to get Bend Luck. At 14th level, you're going to get Controlled Chaos. And finally, at 18th level, you're going to get Spell Bombardment. So, there you go. There's the six pages of information with the beautiful art. And I mean, it, there's so much information about the Sorcerer. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope that also you know, helps you determine if you want to forego using the basic rules and expand to a, a, a better play uh, with the player's handbook. It has a lot more information and a lot more variants of the classes and races, and uh, it's definitely a, definitely a great book. So 
My name is David. I'm with Tabletopping.net, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please feel free to leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, keep rolling those D-100s on that wild magic surge table.